Next up, we're going to model vertical circulation. And so we've got a part in here called the driver circulation. And inside this part, we're going to start by modeling the stairs. Uh, in order to locate the stairs and properly orient them, we need to make a couple of points. Uh, we're going to create the points based on the geometry that came from our grid, our building grid DXF import. And so in order to start, we're going to first extract some geometry from that grid. We're going to external reference that into our driver circulation part. And we can do that just by activating the driver circulation part and then clicking the intersect command because we want to make a point where we're going to place the stairs. So we click on intersect and then we click on that extracted geometry in our other part. It will automatically create external references for us in our current 3D part. So in our current 3D shape, our driver circulation part. So we create the intersection and now that's not exactly where we want to place the stair. We want to place the stair two meters from that intersection point. So we're going to create a new point on our grid line, extracted grid line, uh, and use the intersection as a reference point. Now let's make the stairs. Let's go into the design tab and click on the stair command. It's going to ask us for a position. That position is going to be the point that we just created on our grid line and in a direction. The direction will be our grid line. Now within the stair command, we have so many options to control the different variations that we'd want within the stair. Uh, we're not gonna go through all of them right now, but we're gonna keep mid landings activated. We're gonna change the stair type to solid and we're just going to modify the, the planes that we're using as input. By default, it's gonna grab the top of slab planes, but we actually want these uh, these stairs to be flush with the finished floor. So we're going to modify the primary landing planes uh, and set finished floor. And then at the top landing, we're going to make sure that it extends past because uh, because of the way we we want this slab to, to fill the opening once we make holes in the slabs. We click OK and the stair is generated. That was easy. Let's do it again. We make a new point because now we're going to put this uh, stair on another grid line. So again, relaunch the stair command. And one of the really, really nice things about the stair command is it remembers the previous settings that you had used when you created a previous stair. So all of our input planes are the same. We just have to set the direction and all of the settings from our first stair have been kept. That's really nice. And if you want to make a, if you make a third stair, fourth stair, fifth stair, and then you want to, you change the settings, you want to go back and make a stair just like the first one, uh, edit that first stair and then close it out and go to make a new stair and it will remember the first stair. Now we're gonna make a third stair. The third stair is, is gonna be positioned at that first point that we created. And now we're gonna go from finish floor four up until the top. And we're gonna, so we're gonna select the finish floor planes and most of the settings should be the same. We might have to change the, the path direction so we've set the direction that's perpendicular to the previous stair because of the, the building design that's that's what's required for this stairwell uh, and we may need to change the path direction we may not if not on this one for sure on the next one and once we're all good with that we click ok now we'll make another stair and you see again because we had changed the settings in our third stairwell well, this fourth stairwell is going to keep the same inputs. Uh, we just need to change the input uh, position. We need to change the input direction. Uh, the landings and the finished floor planes have been kept and we'll change the path orientation. Uh, looking at this a little closer, it looks like I need to change the path direction on the second set of stairs. So let's quickly edit, change the path, and our stairwell will update. One thing I know we need to do uh, for the next step that we missed in the creation of these stairs is to give it a gap. Right now the stairs are flush in the center and we need to go in and change the, the gap to about 200 millimeters. No, we'll do 100 millimeters. Change the gap to 100 millimeters uh, on this stair and the other stair that's uh, on the uh, on the other side uh, so that and there will be space for the for the following modeling activity and so with that uh, that's that's the stairwell command and it's as easy as 
a couple of parameters, a couple of inputs, and we've got a very parametric and very robust stair in our model. With our stairs in place, it's going to be really easy to create some slab openings. Uh, we could use a curve or a sketch as an input to create slab openings, but the easiest way to do it is to grab the shaft volume from the stairs. So when we created the stairs, I didn't show you, but there's a shaft space reservation and a head space reservation. Each of those are volumes, and they can be easily referenced for other modeling actions. So in this case, with the slab opening, we're going to grab a volume as an input, and Katia recognizes what slabs are intersecting with that volume and will automatically create the holes and the openings in those slabs. The slab opening and the geometry that's being cut from the slab is hosted still on the slab. It's just that it's been, it's been cut out of the overall slab geometry and hidden in the tree. And so we'll do that for the three other stairs. We'll grab the shaft volume, we'll click slab opening, and it will automatically cut the slabs uh, and create those openings. And the geometry, that shaft geometry, because we modeled these in separate parts, will be external referenced and linked into our active shape. Similar to the stairs, railings are a very powerful automation feature to accelerate design and to make uh, modeling railings much, much faster. Uh, you can place a railing on a stairwell, of course. You can also place it on a curve or a slab edge or a ramp. And you have a number of options on the type of railing components that you want to create. For example, you can, can, you can create the railing itself and control the geometry of the railing. You can create the posts and control the geometry of the posts. You can add balusters uh, and there are a number of different parameters to control the baluster, for example, the spacing, the offset, the geometry, and the, so the shape. Uh, you can also, in addition to those three elements, you can create the handrail itself. With the handrail, you have a number of different options on how to control the handrail. In addition to the geometry itself, which you can control, so you can make it shape, square, uh, rectangle. Uh, in this case, we'll leave it round, but just change the diameter. You can also add returns at the start or the end of the railing. And at the, you can control the geometry of the returns uh, for both the start and the end, or keep them identical. Uh, another thing you can do is, so we've used the accelerator along path to create the railing along the path, but if you needed to remove a section from the railing, just press the control key and then click on the section that you want to remove. Uh, so, you know, the along path is a fantastic accelerator if you're working in a stairwell like this to create uh, the entire length, the entire run of the railing. You can also do above and below or just the single segments. And when you're done, click OK, and it's generated all of the railing geometry for you. I've, and again, it's parametric, so if you need to make a change, you can go in and you can change the post height, for example, and that will change the post height. And because this is tied to the stairwell, if you change that stair geometry, the railing will update with it uh, because it respects the same parent-child relationship that all geometry does when working in a, in a parametric and associative CATIA model. And uh, again, similarly to how uh, the stair command keeps the previous command settings in memory, uh, railing is the same. So when I create a second railing, it's going to remember the settings from the previous railing. And uh, so when I click along path, it's going to give me all of the rails along the path of the stairs. And again, click and control is going to remove the single segments that I don't want to generate. And when I click OK, I have my railing. And so once again, in the click of a button, with a, modifying a couple of parameters, we've gone from zero to complete handrails on these stairwells.